pacemakers are necessary devices that are used for regulating heart arrhythmia or even more dangerous conditions like heart blocks or heart failures of some kinds. But have you ever heard of a pacemaker that's smaller than a grain of rice? Well, now you have. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifix where I'll be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Scientists from the US and Singapore have developed the world's smallest pacemaker. It's smaller than a grain of rice and it measures just 1.8 millimeters in length and is especially suited for the tiny hearts of newborn babies. Pacemakers are basically temporary devices that are used to correct the rhythm of a heartbeat using electrical stimulations. They are often inserted using surgery with wires attached outside the body. But this new pacemaker is a bit different. It can be inserted with an injection and is a non-invasive procedure. More importantly, this pacemaker is made entirely dissolvable so that once the patient no longer requires it, the device will dissolve on its own and does not need to be surgically removed. The paper suggests that this technology can be used in the future for a number of medical procedures which includes wound therapy, pain management and bone regeneration. Our next story today is about a new study in the Journal of American College of Cardiology which looks at how compound heat waves, that is heat waves that last both during the day and the night, increases the risk of cardiac arrest deaths. The study found a non-linear relationship between heat waves and cardiac mortality, which means that they looked at more factors than just the duration of heat waves and the number of cardiac arrests. To get a more complete picture of how heat waves affect heart disease, the authors introduced other factors including types of heat waves, the cumulative heat load, and the intensity of heat waves. By analyzing over 2.4 million cardiac deaths in China, they found that compound day-night heat waves increase the heat pressure and as a result also increase mortality risk. It was especially dangerous for sudden cardiac arrests and heart failures as opposed to other heart diseases. The study is really important to understand the exact effects of heat waves on human health and come up with both preventative and palliative measures. Now, you all know that bats are blind and travel using echolocation, right? Well, scientists have been confused for long about how exactly this echolocation works when they are traveling in large numbers. Now, the Max Planck Institute for Animal Behavior has an answer. In a study published in PNAS Journal, the researchers tried to answer a pertinent question. When bats emerge from their caves at night, sometimes hundreds and thousands at once, how does their echolocation work? How do they not collide into each other? It is, after all, a nightmare cocktail party of echo signals that must get mixed up with each other. But apparently, bats have a way around this. It is true that at the moment when all bats emerge together, 95% of their echolocation signals are jammed. But within 5 seconds, bats fan out and try to increase their distance from the cave and from each other, while at the same time emitting shorter distance signals at higher frequencies. This ensures that they can figure out the location of the bats nearest to them, through which they can then avoid colliding into each other. Finally, in an exciting development, scientists in Germany are trying to make solar cells for space using moon dust or regolith. A study in Cell Press Journal documented how these scientists have created solar cells to convert sunlight into solar energy by using glass that's made from the moon's regolith. This is an attempt to make essential commodities for space exploration using material that's available in space, like regolith. While Earth-made solar cells that are currently used in space missions have almost 40% efficiency, they're also really heavy to carry since they're made from glass and it also makes them expensive. By using lunar regolith, not only does the cost and weight come down, but it also increases the number of cells that can be used because moon dust is available aplenty. While this is a promising avenue, the team is still unsure of how microgravity conditions on the moon might affect the production and the usage of these cells. The study said that they hope that they can launch an experiment in the moon soon to test their new cells. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into the print.